folks, this is what wasted potential looks like. Ladies and gentle nerds, this is Dr. Frank Max here, back with another episode of Croissant for Thought. Hope you like the new intro. <laughs> Came up with it yesterday. I have no life. So, today we'll be talking about one of the most critical aspects of sniper gameplay, the Razorback. Yeah, uh, the Razorback is great, it's like a turtle, because now you have a shell, it makes you invincible spies and you can't die. So, you'll never get back to that, but again, you could just shoot people and be great. Sniper must have a G choice. Alright, in reality, I am not talking about the Razorback or sniper gameplay today, however, the Razorback is one of the most useless weapons, uh, well, secondary slots, because it's not really a weapon, for the sniper, so I may talk about it in a future croissant for thought, but not today. Today, I'm going to be talking about one of the weirdest, randomest, and frankly most illogical weapons in the spy's arsenal, the Sapper. Now hold on, let's take a step back there, I can already hear you guys furiously typing in the comments about, you know, how could I think that the Sapper as a spy main is useless? I mean, it's one of the few weapons that the spy gets to use to destroy sentry guns and other engineer buildings. It's also one of the most effective tools used to take down both ends of a teleporter put placed down by an enemy engineer. I mean, how can that be considered useless? Well, hear me out, because during the course of this video, we're going to see that maybe the Sapper is taking up a position that it shouldn't be. Maybe another weapon could be replaced with it to make, frankly, the Spy's job a little bit easier. And maybe the Sapper doesn't really enhance Spy gameplay at all. So let's take a look at this one step at a time. In fact, I've even come up with four helpful little categories to help us narrow down what makes a Spy weapon a Spy weapon. Okay, so, the first thing we have to look at in regards to a spy weapon is, number one, does the weapon adhere to real-life science? Now, let's take a look at one weapon at a time. Guns, the, the pistol slot completely adheres to real-life science. The uh, knife slot, and, I, and I'm only looking at stock weapons. The knife slot with its critical backstab is actually... Uh, what's that, what that is supposed to represent is you stabbing somebody in the back, you cut off the brain stem at the base of the neck on that vertebrae, and it paralyzes and kills people, so that's accurate. Um, the Invis Watch and the Disguise Kit, uh, if we were to take the route of holograms and theoretical science, yes, that is a potential possibility to exist, and I may talk about that in a future video, but I'm getting on a tangent. The Sapper. Does it adhere to real-life science? Well, let's go see. The concept for the Sapper is surprisingly relatively basic. It's a box which has tentacle nodes that connect to engineers' buildings. When these nodes are connected and the Sapper is activated, it absorbs electricity out of the building in question and into the Sapper. Once enough electricity is taken from the engineer building, the Sapper overloads and detonates, destroying the now weakened building. But that doesn't make sense. If you've ever overloaded a battery, you'd know that it doesn't explode. It may smoke, fizzle, cause sparks, and even flare up a little bit, but it doesn't detonate. Nothing in a battery allows it to cause an explosion. It'll short out whatever circuitry it's connected to, making the sapper no longer usable, but other than that, it shouldn't completely destroy the building in question and the sapper. Also, how is it connecting to any of the electrical components? Did Valve not take a basic circuitry class? You should know that you can't add something to the circuitry of a device unless it's connected to the circuits. So unless the entire sentry gun is lined with a thin layer of copper wire that is invisible to the naked eye, I highly doubt that the sapper is able to connect to any actual circuitry by sticking glass cling wires to the outside of the building. And another thing. How many sappers does the spy have anyway? Everything. I say everything that is a weapon in TF2, except a few exceptions, one that I absolutely hate, and holy crap, it should die, Valve, what the crap are you thinking? Has ammo, or at least the majority of the weapons in that particular weapon slot for that particular class have ammo. Except the sapper. 
The spy has immediate access to however many sappers they may need at any given time. Is this a simple oversight by Valve's development team? Maybe, but then once they realize they'd overlooked this one, they have, I don't know, fixed it? You know, gone in, added a few lines of code, made the sapper have an ammo count? I mean, how is this at all logical? Does the spy have a TARDIS pocket in his suit jacket or something? Does he have an infinite void specifically designed to hold sappers? Is he the doctor? Wait a second. If you watched my previous croissant for thought, I brought up the fact that the Invis Watch's assistance in infiltrating enemy lines and the use of espionage and spy gameplay may have potentially been the reason the spy class was originally created. The original Team Fortress spy class actually couldn't turn invisible and his ability to disguise his enemy players was a glitch, so these two mechanics were applied to the gameplay with explicit intent on Valve's part to make the spy class an espionage class. But the sapper almost seems to outright contradict the espionage style of gameplay. I don't know, call me facetious, but the sapper doesn't even do what the Meet the Class video for the spy suggests. In the Meet the Spy video released by Valve, we see a spy sliding a sapper across the floor underneath a sentry gun being managed by an engineer. The sentry gun fizzles and explodes despite the engineer's voiced objections. But pause right there. What? Throwing a sapper? Huh? The spy never does that. That mechanic doesn't even exist! You have to literally be two inches from the sentry in order to apply a sapper to it. And that one simple fact, the fact that you cannot use it while under cloak, or in a sneaky way in order to avoid being detected while using it, is what ruins this weapon for category number two. No. No, it doesn't. If a spy is meant to sneak around swiftly and avoid detection from enemies, camouflage with their surroundings, blend in as one of the enemy's own, collect enemy intelligence and defend himself if necessary, how does the sapper fit with that theme? Almost everything about it, from its application technique to its overall purpose to its usefulness and scientific accuracy, seems to contradict the spy class completely. Now, in light of all this, I know that the spy's ability to sap sentry guns is a useful skill, and I'm not asking Va for Valve to get rid of it or even make different unlocks to encourage some more gameplay to how the spy is intended to be played. But I do want us to realize that a spy, coming out of cloak, disguised or non, running up to a sentry gun or other enemy engineer building and applying a sapper to try and destroy the building in full view of everyone in the general vicinity contradicts the spy class in so many ways I can't even count them. As an espionage-oriented class that is supposed to work with their team to achieve goals, the sapper mechanic seems to discourage teamwork and encourage the problem I had in the last episode of Croissant for Thought with people W plus M wanting sentry guns. Everything said and done, this video ended kind of on a low note, so I have a suggestion to improve the sapper now. Maybe if a mechanic were added that would allow it to be tossed a specific distance by secondary fire with the sapper equipped were added, but a downside was also added where every time you miss an enemy building using this throw the sapper technique, you lost a small percentage of your cloak, let's say 5%. And maybe if Valve added an ammo can to the sappers, let's say 45 sappers at start, I feel that that would help make the sapper more of an espionage weapon tool thingamajig, and less of an offensive tactic against enemy buildings. Another nice thing would be if the sapper was given as a weapon to all classes, kind of like the grenades were a thing for everyone in the original Team Fortress, and that was also planned in Team Fortress 2, so that would make it so that the spy wasn't the one who was always having to take on teleporters. In fact, that would be, in my opinion, a better solution than changing the sapper's stats. Then again, this is my opinion, and no one is required to agree, but hey, Valve, think about it. After all, changing the sapper would definitely be croissant for thought. Thank you so much for watching this video about my opinion of the sapper, guys, and as always, be sure to stay tuned for more awesomeness. Frank and Max, signing off. Oh, and while we're at it, why?